the hadith where, where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says, Allah has chosen certain days for you from your time where He sends breezes of mercy. And if that mercy touches you, you will be a completely different person. I'm not talking about, you know, some superficial false epiphany in your life where you're religious for two, three days or two, three weeks or two, three months. Then you go right back to what you were doing as soon as the effect of that wears off. I'm talking about an experience that happens in your life that you will be able to reflect upon for the rest of your life, inshallah, as the day that my life changed. Creating the atmosphere, setting yourself up to change, making sure that you're ready um, for that change. Now, let me give you an example of a very touching story. There was an imam in our, in, in, in our history books by the name of Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullah ta'ala. Malik ibn Dinar was known as Imam Ahlul Basra, the Imam of the people of Basra, one of the greatest you know, towns, greatest communities, large communities. He was from the Taba'a Taba'in, he was from the followers of the Taba'in, the, the best generations. And he was known as their Imam to give very beautiful speeches every single night. He would stand up and he would address the people. So one night in this narration of Tabaqat, Imam Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he stands up and uh, as he's about to speak, he you know, his eyes are, are full of tears and he puts his head down and the tears are running down his eyes before he says anything. Then he raises his head and he's smiling and people are looking at him confused, like, what just happened? You didn't say anything. And he says, do you know my story? Do you know my story? And subhanAllah, he, pro he proceeds then to tell them his story. He says that I used to be a police officer and I used to be a filthy drunk. And I had no interest in ibadah. I had no interest in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All I used to do was drink, 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 drink. And I had no interest in praying. And I was, you know, I used to oppress people. I used to wrong people. And he says, one day I was walking in the marketplace in Basra. And I saw two men quarreling, two men fighting. And the fight, the dispute was over. You know, when I went and I, I inquired as a police officer what was going on, one man, you know, said to him, he said that this man stole a gift that I just bought for my daughter. So Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah says, so I sided with the man who was making that claim, who was saying that, you know, this man stole my, my gift and I made sure that the gift was returned to him. And I said to that man, tell your daughter to make dua for me. Ask your daughter to make dua for me. So he said, that night I went home feeling better about myself. I went home, you know, I went, I went home feeling good about uh, about what had just happened. So he says, then I started to think, I said, you know what, how come I'm not married? How come I don't have a daughter of my own? He said, I should go get married. But then when I started to inquire for marriage, who's going to want to marry me? I was a filthy drunk and everybody knew it. So he said, the only way I could get married is to buy a slave girl and to free her and make her my wife. That was the only way I could get married. So I bought a slave, you know, and they went to one of the markets of slavery and bought a slave girl and he freed her and made her his wife. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gave him a daughter by the name of Fatima. Fatima bin Malik ibn Dinar. Who had a great effect, who has a great uh, place in this deen. Not because of anything she contributed in dunya, but you'll find out. Uh, so I have this daughter and he said, I loved her so much. I used to come home every day, I used to play with her. I used to make sure that, I, you know, that we always spent time together. And he said, I would sometimes have my wine bottle, my bottle of alcohol, and she would push the wine over. And although I was an alcoholic, I was addicted to alcohol, I wouldn't mind because I loved her more than the alcohol. So even though you know, I had the alcohol and I had her, when she pushed the alcohol, I didn't mind. Then he says something happened one day. He was drunk and he was playing with her, he was throwing her in the air, and he dropped her and she died. And this wasn't this isn't this is the time you know these are the moments in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you an, an instance that should turn you back to Allah Allah sends you a test Allah sends you a wake-up call that should turn you back to Allah but unfortunately what most people do is they turn further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when that happens they just they go further and further so instead of doing something about it instead of coming back to Allah he just kept on drinking. He became worse of an alcoholic. He, be he became more of an alcohol abuser. And he still didn't go pray. He still didn't do anything that was pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, one night I had a dream. And I had a dream. And in that dream, I received my book in my left hand. My book of deeds in my left hand. And when that happened, I realized it was the day of judgment. And I saw a huge black serpent, a huge snake chasing me. So I started to run away from that snake because I knew that if he got a hold of me, 
I would be devoured completely. While I was being chased by that snake, I came across an extremely old man. So I asked that old man to protect me. I said, can you do something for me? Can you help me with the snake? And the old man said to me, you know, look at me and look at that snake. What do you think? I, what would I be able to possibly, what would I possibly be able to do to stop that snake from coming after you? So he said, I kept on running and running and running and running until I came to condominiums on high hills, beautiful condominiums on high hills. And I saw a bunch of children playing with each other. And I saw amongst those children, my daughter Fatima. And she came running to me and she embraced me. She grabbed onto me, she held me. And she said to the snake uh, to go away. She signaled to the snake to go away and the snake went away. And I was shivering, and my daughter says to me, Fatima says to me, Ya Abati, Alam yatni min ladina amanu an takhsha'a quruduhum bi dhikri Allah wa nazal min al-haq. Isn't it time for those who believe, for those who have faith, to soften their hearts, to humble their hearts, to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma nazal min al-haq, and the truth which He has revealed, the 16th ayah in Surah Al-Hadid. And she kept on repeating that to me. Alam Yatni, by the way, means isn't it time? We still recite it as isn't it time? Not hasn't time passed. No, it's the ayah that is that is constant. It's you know it, it's timeless, and it, and it and it refers to each and every single one of us when we read when we read it. Isn't it time for you to humble your heart to Allah and the truth which He revealed, the commands which He revealed? And He said, I woke up that day, and I did something that I hadn't done for 17 years. He said I made wudu, and I went to the masjid. And I prayed, and the Imam was reciting, The same ayah that my daughter was telling me in my dream. And that Imam was Imam Hassan al Basri, who would become his scholar, who would become his teacher. And Malik ibn Dinar goes down as one of the greatest scholars in history. His life changed completely, he became a completely different person.